I'm James Waterworth from underscorepart3.co.uk. I've got two of the members of um, Frank Carter and the Raptors Snakes. I've got Frank Carter here and Dean Richardson. So how are you? Um, I know you've played in Bournemouth before. I'm not sure whether you have been. Um, how are you feeling? How is it to be in Bournemouth? We played in, right? Yeah, we yeah, played yeah. before. Long right early on, though. Yeah, so yeah. Good. yeah, it's good. It feels good to be back. We had a day off yesterday, so apart from the weather, it was uh, pretty beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it was yeah. out in the rain anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you spent you spent the day in Bournemouth town. Yeah. What, did, what did you get up to? Um, South no. Coast roast. Yeah. Got hand drop them didn't make them today. <laughs> Have you been to the Yeah. Yeah, I had the vegan brunch special. It was mm. delicious. Um, yeah, the boys just they ended up bowling, and I was like, I can't go. Did you go? No. Nah. No. So I went. Uh, I went to see Bohemian Rhapsody, and I cried the whole way through. Mm. Um, so, reading the press release, which obviously we've got, mm. um, you, it's comments on here that this is our third, I think this is your statement, our third and our most important. What makes it for you guys and the rest of the band the most important? What do fans need to know? So we've had a bit of a curse in our run of mm. music, mm. Um, where every band we've been in has never really made it past the second release. So when we started this band, there was a promise made to each other. Basically, I forced it on him. <laughs> like, you have to write a third album with me, no matter what happens. Even if we fall out and fucking hate each other, we're going to get to album three. And um, I think the process of actually getting into it was quite like it was it was quite hard work at times, wasn't it? Like but just in actually processing the information that was going to go into it. It's quite a, an introverted like. E extraction, you know, I had to just go in on my own and find mm -hmm. like really what I was. Re there's a lot of like reflection. Yeah, it's the it. opposite of just churning an album. Out. Like it just, yeah. it's very much like you can't do it unless you're mm -hmm. specifically with lyrics mm -hmm. unless you're in a place where you're able to. <laughs> yeah, exactly that, yeah. And so, and likewise with the music as well. Like everything was different about this album, including the place that we wrote it. Like mm -hmm. we used to write everything in my old studio. Mm -hmm moved away from there so now we've got a new studio together mm. and um, yeah so I don't know when, when we talk about what fans can expect it's, it's kind of difficult because they this, they should have no expectations mm. it's like we, this is a band singing directly from the soul to them trying to answer um, trying to find new questions I guess about life and what it means to be alive and um, but also a band that's really challenging themselves and uh, trying to find new new ways. Yeah. Um, so you very much wipe the slate clean at the start of the writing thing. It's not mm. let's make more of what we did with that or this. It's mm. it's just like what do we want to make now? Mm. Mm. And, and being album three, you know, it's, it's clearly it's clearly something you're proud of that you've got there. We made it. Made it. <laughs> you fucking made it. I can't believe it. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what we've heard so far. Our first glimpse is well I told you but you know, I'm 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 loving it. It's brilliant. But the thing I found quite interesting is for you guys it feels quite an accessible anthem. It feels very stadium designed and I think it's brilliant. But your tour choices are kind of mid size. Mm. Um how do you go about picking your tour choices and what was your you know you, you, you every day on the tour is sold out, <coughs> the venues could be bigger I guess. Yeah, they could be. Yeah, yeah. It was a conscious decision. Yes, yeah, can you tell me about that? We 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 just do. You get you can get stuck in a bit of a loop of playing the the kind of big cities, Manchester, Glasgow, London, and if you if if you're touring the world, you kind of like you get two shots at UK each year, and then you can go years and say, well, do you remember that time I played Bournemouth? And it was awesome, mm. and it doesn't fit as part of the mm. the regular standard tour thing. So mm. I guess it was more as with a lot of stuff we try and do. <laughs> Try and just like say, what would you rather do? Not, not what should we do at this point? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and we get to play places we played before, and some we've never played. Played Margate the other day; it was awesome. And, um, yeah, so I think it was definitely a conscious thing to play some small shows and yeah. have a, a wild time. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a conscious decision to write stadium that for no. us. We, did, we just, we obviously. It, you know, if you listen to our first or second album, there isn't a stadium anthem on there. Mm. But what happened was the way we, we play with so much passion and energy mm. that that gets noticed by bigger bands, you know, and then they want mm. us to come and support them. So it just happened that last year we ended up playing in some stadiums mm. completely by accident. Mm. Um, and and then this summer we're going to do more of that, you know, like Foo Fighters are really, they, they've given us an incredible opportunity to join them on, on tour again. Mm. 
um, it's not anything that we take lightly. But what it what it does mean is um, when you get an opportunity to go back and play a small venue, you better fucking take it because it's, <laughs> it might not it might be soon that you can't do that again. You know? So we'll see. Mm -hmm. So actually, the little bits we know, we've got Crowbar, and then we've got, um, we've seen that there's a, there's a lyric in your opening track, um, Why a Butterfly Can't Love a Spider, which I'm going to make sure I get it right, which features the lyric, When I'm high, I'm in heaven, when I'm at low, I'm in hell. Yeah. To me, this paints, is, as you say, being introspective and reflecting, maybe this will reflect in your answer. It sounds like you're a person, if, if your lyrics, that experiences a wide range of emotions and I guess that would affect the styles and the sounds and you know, how does that affect everything? I think style, stylistically and sonically, um, we have never wanted to put ourselves in any kind of box. We never wanted to pigeonhole ourselves or limit the type of... Uh, uh, inspiration that we use or in fact the, the musical output that we want to make we just like making music even on our first record you know we, we're still playing the song I hate you it's a blues song mm. it really is you know Dean loves blues I love blues he wrote it like he was like I've got one more thing I guess and <laughs> played it and I was like keep playing it on a loop and keep I had it, the lyrics and, I, and then literally within six minutes yeah. I was like okay right listen to this this is ridiculous but Listen to this, and he's like, oh. so, so for us, you know, we've never wanted to um, basically limit what, what we can make. Um, mm. To do that would be such a tragedy. Mm. Um, and yeah, I guess at the bottom of it all is the notion that we're all incredibly complicated and we have, you know, huge ups and huge downs as people. Um, but the reality is, like, what's very important is that we don't let ourselves be defined by either the highs or the lows, you know, and that's what the song's all about, is, is you know, when I'm high, I'm in heaven, it, it can mean anything, it's not necessarily about drugs, people get high for all sorts of things, and um, that's not always a good thing, you know, like I, I need to at some point find a way to um, feel better flying around the web, feel better when I'm in the web, <laughs> and feel better when I'm in the fucking jaws of the spider, you know, so. This, these are big, powerful feelings we're gonna mm. we're gonna see on this album. I feel I'm, I'm, I'm right. It's, no, it's, it's, I'm, 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 I'm excited. Yeah, no, like we we broke ourselves in half to make this. Like we we, um, yeah, you can't like this is as close to sort of surviving open heart surgery as you get. I guess <laughs> it's been a savage experience for both of us. But the, the, like we, I'm really lucky. I found him, you know, mm. because he he understands me in a way that no one else does, and likewise, and. We, we you know we live together now even though we mm -hmm. we work together, um, but what one thing you know and while while nothing's really changed the one thing that has changed is like our approach to songwriting drastically changed mm -hmm. like we just there was this, uh, suddenly we became confident in ourselves mm -hmm. to dig deeper and with that self confidence came a level of criticism we never had before whereas before yeah. we were quite we were quite good at patting ourselves on the back weren't we <laughs> we were like, the back. <laughs> yeah, we, we like oh this is a great song like mm. now it's a case of like okay this is a good song how can we make this a, a beautiful song or a brilliant mm. song yeah. or a you know devastating song yeah. and uh, and now i think we made an album where every song it has all of those parts each song is beautiful and devastating and mm. tragic and wonderful Mm -hmm. it's, they're all ultimately they're all celebrations of life you know it's, it's, it's a really wonderful record but yeah yeah i can hear modest pride in it i can hear you know it's good but you know that you've had to be powerful to do it and you've had to be reflective you've had to notice your difficulties and positives mm -hmm. yeah i mean re realistically we we have a platform we've got a responsibility um with that platform to to question ourselves at all times, question what we're doing and who we are and what we're making. And uh, and to do that for all the people that can't, that don't get the chance to, that, that can't find the words yeah. to express how they feel, can't find the words to, um, you know, t to I explain to anyone or to try and understand the sort of questions that they're facing every day. That's, that's our job, you know, it's my job to sort of try and condense those questions into words and it's his job to find the soundtrack for it. So luckily like we're in, we're in a, I think we're in a pretty good place and we've done a really good job.
someone get the crowbar?